I had always admired the skill and artistry of basket making. Over time, I began collecting all sorts of baskets, both as decor and for use outdoors and around the home. Most of the baskets were vintage pieces that undoubtedly have passed through many hands and likely have served many a noble purpose. So when my friend Kirsten mentioned she had a friend who makes baskets, I wanted to meet him and see the process which remained mysterious to me. Many of the indigenous peoples of the Northeast had their own way of making baskets, with birch or sweet grass or ash, for example. The Haudenosaunee, or people of the longhouse, used black ash wood splints to craft their baskets. Ash trees, however, have come under siege from an invasive wood-boring insect called the emerald ash borer, which since its arrival has killed hundreds of millions of ash trees. We still have some ash untouched by the borer on our own land, but most people say that it's only in time that almost all the ash will be gone from our forests, and all the species for which those trees support will likely go with them. As much as this video is about learning how to make a basket from an ash tree, it's also about how these baskets serve as a vessel to preserve a vital piece of history of our ever-changing forests. So all this fish here, it's nice. Beavers here, lots of ducks. It's a nice place to sit in the evening. The, the tree that we're working on actually came from the neighbor's property on this side of the swamp. Um, been fortunate the neighbors are letting us cut, knowing that the emerald ash borers in the area yeah. make use of the trees. There's some nice trees before the emerald ash borer got into them. We could have got them and just floated them here to the bridge and get them out. But now we have to get them out by hand and it's a lot more dragging for the boys, but. That's when you need to run their energy low, you know, before they go to bed at night. <laughs> This is ash. You got some quaking aspens. I love the aspens. That's actually our uh, wood for the truck baskets. The oh, really? Mm -hmm. No way. Yeah, it's always been my favorite tree. It's wow. always been around me. Just love the, just seeing it twinkle. Yeah. Uh, the lightest breeze, but that's, we take a pretty big tree, poplar tree, and that'll get us years of baskets. This is where the swamp starts for us. Uh, look this at the is where it all asters. drops down. Yeah. You know, our property is mostly wetland and it goes all the way to the lake that way. It's a nice spot to be. I enjoy it more in the winter with the kids. We route in it a lot more. That's it's, fun. It's usually, you'll just see water here. This has been a dry year for sure. Yeah. So you can walk the swamp. And it seems to be getting progressively drier since we moved out here. Interesting. I'm noticing that, yeah. yeah. We could even drive a small tractor this way and not get wet, which is usually wet, wet in the beginning. Yeah, you'd ever get the tractor stuck back here? Yeah, in the yeah. early days, yeah. yeah. So I tend to just do everything on foot. It's just better that way. And Between two teenage boys and me, we can do it. Yeah. Yeah, in the snow, we slide a lot of wood on snow. Um, this is our closest ash tree right here. So tell me why this tree died. Well, the main reason is it's old, it was an older tree, but it's the emerald ash borer that's moved into the area. Um, we started to notice it two years ago. We knew about it before that, but we started to notice it in the trees. And it's acting really fast. If you, you see the crown being this bare, you know it's too late, but you could see it earlier in the bark color. Yeah. This one, you'll see the yellower spots, those lighter patches. I see that's, them, yeah. That's where the borer is behind and already has girdled that part of the tree. Whereas, you know, there's trees over here. These are all smaller ash. Mm -hmm. You can see the tops still have some leaves. They're not that bad. They're still gonna be usable next season to cut. Whereas this tree is gonna be not usable for baskets because it's just going to be dry to the base. Have you noticed if they prefer a certain maturity of the, of the trees? No. No. I, we saw it all at once in this, you know, this tree to, you know, little saplings. All of them are getting infected. This tree is really, really porous and it has a real thick cambium, so I could see why it would want to be in this tree. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could just swim through the cambium. It's a real thick layer. Mm. Uh, it's unfortunate, but trying to make the best we can. I may still cut this log out, just the base chunk. This is what's happening, you see. Yeah, all that suckers, goldish. Suckers, yeah. and all, that makes, you know, a knot through the whole wood, which is hard to use, but this is all. 
either exit holes or woodpeckers going in for them. We may just leave it here and just to remember it by, let it stand and let the bugs get it. We have a few cut. Mm -hmm. We're storing them in a pond right now, that's the plan. We have some in some water canoes full of water. I'm not sure how it'll work, but I have enough to do a few years worth of baskets and I you know, didn't always plan to make baskets, so maybe something else will happen in the time when that runs out. And when you walk the woods with the ash trees, do you notice that, that they're all affected or you think there's yeah, some Yeah, and it that... happened all at once. Wow. All the ash varieties that we have have it. And it's really within two years, it's just, they're dead. Yeah, it's just so striking. Normally we'll cut them at the end of winter when we have a little bit of snow, but the sap is running. You know, it's warm enough that the sap's coming up the tree. We'll, we'll show, show you the tree we're gonna work on today. It's really big. So mm -hmm. we, we slid it on the snow. The kids actually rode it down a hill. Uh, it was fun to get it to move. What's the importance of the sap running? Um, you want the tree to be juicy. Because when I'm a hammer, the next step is to hammer the tree to get the basket splints to separate. If you were to hammer the wood dry, it's just they're gonna, you know, hurt your hand. Mm. You want it to be able to crush fiber without breaking it. Mm. This log has been debarked, what would have been the next step after cutting it down. Get all the bark and cambium off. Mm -hmm. And this tree actually soaked for a full year in our pond. We're test testing it to see how it would do if it would rot or not. Oh my God, that is heavy. It's really heavy. Wow. It's waterlogged. Yeah. That makes it heavier. It seems dry. What we'll do is we'll give it a little tea, tea <laughs> water here. Because if it was just green, green cut, I would hammer on it without wetting it. Right. But this tree, like I said, has been soaked for a year and then it's been out of the water for months because I just can't get through it that fast. It's so big. It should be a year's worth of baskets in this tree, though. And how old is this tree? Have you? I would guess it was 70. Yeah. You can count them for sure. Yeah. I mean, I have the original cut there. Oh, yeah. Get it to soak in a bit. Yeah. Tea for the tree and tea for me. <laughs> That's the clearest tea I've ever seen. So you can see how it squishes. <laughs> Oh yeah, look at that. It's like a little sponge. When I hammer it, you're not gonna wanna be here because it will squirt, you okay. know, that way. Good to know. Especially if I get one of these, when I'm working on these ones that have been in the canoe, that water's a little slimy. Oh, I do smell it. it. I just got yeah, a, I just got a nice, level. Uh, some nice bacteria it's action fermenting. happening in yeah. there. <laughs> Trying to keep them, I try to change it, but it's just so much tannin. There's so much sugar in the sap, yeah. I think it just goes. The donk doesn't mind drinking that water though. Loves it. <laughs> so. So I'm gonna stand yeah, back just here. Get it in position. That should be all right. If I start back here, I can usually squeeze it that way. But the log is actually vibrating yeah. and it loosens the layers. Before it's been hit at all, the tree is is really tight. You know, oh, he's going right for your teacup. Well, it's his your teacup tea is now his tea. It's his tea. He's, he's involved in this process at this point. I'm going to learn to work with this dog. Oh my goodness, it's so okay, great. Me. Yeah. All right, thank you. I think any piece we've done out here has had an animal involved at some point. Yeah. yeah. Originally, when I start these trees after the bark and cambiums off, I'm using a really big hammer, like mm -hmm. twice the weight and I'll work it on the ground just to kind of break the tree, just to get it to loosen up a little bit, stretch it. I've already done that on this, this whole section. I actually went around the whole thing and we pounded it. So hmm. now we're doing the small hammer. And it's well attached here. I mean, it's not coming apart. Yeah. You couldn't pull that apart. Yeah. You have to compress it. If I pound this part, you'll actually see that. Just a little bit of oh, pounding yeah. starts to squirt that out. And it's also starting to crack a little bit. Yeah. yeah. You can see that it starts wow. to loosen. And that's what we've got here. Hit this a little bit. Trying to hit every spot it's, without missing any. I can see it. It's pretty subtle. It also he sounds more resonant over here and oh, then yeah. like. Well, the sound is what helps me know it's ready to peel. 
there's a there's a sound it makes. And there's also a crack if you hit it wrong that you don't want to hear mm. if your hammer comes. And that happens later in the day if you've been doing it a mm. while. I'll just do this whole section loose first. This is a hard force I'm using. I don't have to do this all the way through. Once we get this section off, the next section will work easier and so on to the point where it'll start to peel open in the middle. But you gotta put a lot of vibration in there. Yeah. I mean, it's shaking the whole tree, even down here, I can feel it. It's, you know, it's, it's working it. And on a smaller tree, it'll really shake a tree. Yeah. This tree will beat me more than I beat it. Whereas a small tree, I can put all my, energy into it and it stays into it this one comes back i feel it it's amazing how much you know you feel the vibration here way more than here <laughs> it's like you just like from that side when you're hitting it mm -hmm. it's a neat sound i've been because my boys have helped me been up the road been away from it you can hear it the sound away from here is nice oh. but the neighbors here isn't so bad That's good till there, and I can feel it doesn't want to pull anymore. Mm -hmm. But check out between these layers when I pull them. I hear where the hairs are. Oh, yeah. And that rough stuff will eventually come off later. That's what I was, I'll draw shave yeah. off with my knife. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to get it nice and smooth, but these are all loose. You can feel they don't have to do anything to that. Yeah. That's so cool how it just mm -hmm. falls in these strips this is good smelling because it hasn't been in the, the canoe oh yeah that is nice it has like it. a little bit of a like not a cedar smell but a little bit yeah that's nice it ranges to me between melon and beer the smells that mm. i get off the wood and the thickness is based on the growth rings yeah i'm getting a lot of very tight growth, tight rings. Mm -hmm. I think it's just getting warm and dry. It doesn't do well in that. You know, it's so fascinating because I don't know if you'd be able to do this with the tropical wood because tropical woods like don't have those growth rings, you know? Yeah. So it's like the seasons yeah, I'm not aware inspire of any of the growth rings and mm -hmm. you wouldn't, so tropical wood, you'd, you can make furniture out of it, but you can't do this, you know? Yeah. Which is probably why they use like reed or something else in basketry and warmer climates. Every location has their preferred basket material. Yeah. It's just, I guess, something that I never really internalized until yeah. now. I love the color of this, and this wood is coming off. If it only had this little bit of sap wood, you can see this bright, brighter. Because it's wet, it's not as bright yeah. compared to what's in here. This is very pink and fleshy. This is a great tree. This is a gift from my neighbor. Let us go over there and cut. That's as far as we got. This is getting harder too because there's these, you know, what are they? starts. You know, that's where branches are starting. Oh, I see, yeah. yeah. They're like, like little this. pimples. Yeah, and that's yeah. from the bore. That's the stress of the tree. It wouldn't normally put branches this low. Yeah. This is the bottom of the tree. So it's there's like... no reason for it to have branches here this yeah, late in its life. Stress, it's stress signal. So we're gonna use these and find ways to use these, you know, these smaller pieces should be fine. And then here's some of the borer right here you can see. Yeah, we got some good tattooing. Yeah. Those ones got it bad. Had a whole family in there. Yeah and you can see all the nipples on that first log. I mean oh, it's just yeah. covered. You wanna try it? I'd love to, but I don't want to. You want to hurt it. You should use two hands. Uh -huh. That way you won't, you know. Okay. You keep it flat. <laughs> Just stop me if I'm doing something wrong. No, nope, that looks about right. Sweet, you got this. Hey, we'll check in. And, uh... It is, it is kind <laughs> of like, it, it gives back to you, you know? Yeah, it does. Very nice sound. These big logs are great because it's a rich base. The real small pieces that we get to work with lately are really high pitched and you need ear protection. You got it. Yeah. yeah. Just tell me when I have to stop. I'm not going to stop here. <laughs> that means I have to start. Yeah. 
That is the harder end. It just takes more, you know, multiple times because it's the base of the tree. It's the core, the strength of the tree holding it up. Yeah. It's like it's abs. You just reminded me. I'm like, I'm going to tighten my abs when I do this too. Yeah, I focus on um, lifting the hammer and directing it, and then I'm just letting the hammer hit the spot I direct it towards, but I'm almost not holding the hammer anymore. I'm yeah, you almost have I'm to like. I'm holding it as loose as I can hold it without it falling out of my hand. Yeah, you almost have to like. It goes right up here. Yeah. Right into my jaw. You kind of want to, um, I don't know, like I, I don't want to like grip it too tight in a way, yeah. Yeah, no, you'll take the vibration into you. That's why I said these logs fight back a little bit. But I feel like my jaw is like, do you tighten your jaw? I was, I don't. Okay, because mine's it. like, I'm open, I'm like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I had that youthful energy in the beginning and I was really bearing down. I know I enjoy it because I'm only doing less than an hour at a time. It's so much, you feel it like down here, it's so much tighter down here. Yes. It's like, uh, th like this bounces, you know? Uh -huh. I'm gonna get a second hammer and we can both keep going. You, you okay. Work your way towards the end. Okay. We'll double up on it. That's great. Yeah, you're missing some spots though. I'm missing some spots? <laughs> <laughs> This sounds more like a drum, you know? And then down here. <laughs> Hear that sound? It's like really resonant, and then here. This is a little heavier hammer. <laughs> this is what you need your apprentices to do, you know, then that way you, you can just concentrate on the basket making. Mm -hmm. It's nice to be able to do it start to finish with someone. Yeah. You get this part understanding the, the start of it. Well, you can always like... You start to feel the wood from this point already. You're like, this is going to yeah. be, this is going to be. You can always touch it as you go. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You have to understand your body as much as you understand the wood, you know? Yeah. There it is. That's good. It's got a nice character knot right in the middle of it all, but we'll make use of that. I'm going to do the like, very end because it's the hardest, hardest. And this big hammer will destroy it. I think it helps like if I'm doing two hands to put the right on top and then the left on the bottom and the left on top and the left on the bottom, you know, mm -hmm. just to switch it up. Yeah, I did two hands for many years. That was the way to do it. But then I got into having to do it for so long. Yeah, long I can see I how, say, oh, oh my God. Arm, get this arm yeah, this break. really, it does wear you. Yeah. Are there any other ways to do this or does the hammer do a job that you can't really do with anything else? The only thing we've looked into or not, the person I learned from was doing more of trying to figure it out, was to Sorry, squeeze what? it, to compress it oh. with something, you know, to roll it. But we never were successful at figuring that out. And when it comes down to it, all the energy put into finding a better way, this is the best way. Yeah. How much do you want to do? Like this is going to be a few baskets right here. And this might be, what we're going to weave today, probably three of those baskets. So. I mean, what more do you want to do? Worked for 20 yeah. minutes to a half hour and yeah. take a break from this, so. Hold it and see, a little bit. Nice, that was real good. You want to pull the last bit off? Yeah, yeah. It'll kind of pop at the end. Oh yeah, nice. there you go, that's nice. Yeah, so we just lay it over top and peel, peel them apart, and that's it. They're already nice. kind of peeled apart almost, There's you know? Some, some of them still. It's a good harvest. It's a good tree. What are you specifically looking for in these things? Just to separate the annual rings. Um, these are all different thicknesses. This is very light. This is a little heavier, and this is a nice, nice one. Yeah, that's going in. 
quite a bit thicker than even these two put together this one year. So it's a better growing year. They just can't hold together once you compress that layer, that fiber layer with a hammer. It's so funny, I have a belt made of uh, wood. Yeah. And now I can appreciate it a little bit more because you can see how flexible some of the wood could be. Yeah. So at this point, I'm gonna have enough of it. Would sort it a little bit by thickness, like these are heavy. These are mediums, and that's light. Just so later when it's dry, I don't have to do more mm -hmm. picking through the pile. So I put them all together just now that they're sorted. You see I'm kind of offsetting the tails of them a little bit. So that's the heaviest. Mm -hmm. Let's do that. Maybe we can wrap them up. Let them dry for a little bit. Can you talk about the direction again? Like, how do you know what the outside is? And this wants is, to bend one way, right? Yeah, when we take these off the tree, I'm trying to be mindful of the front and the back, so the outside of the tree and the inside of the tree. Mm -hmm. And when I store them, I'm always keeping the inside on the inside on this bend. That makes sense. When we pull them apart later, all the material will have a little bit of a bend to it when it's dried, and it'll keep me from having to think about it so much. Yeah. Um, the reason to coil it like this when it dries, this this flat part is going to want to cup when the moisture gets out of it. So to keep it from cupping, we're going to keep it flat onto itself. And you tie and it? it dry. Yeah, we're going to okay. use just a, another piece of this. Maybe the piece we took off, we'll take a clean piece yep. of it. Maybe in the... This one's... Somewhere in here, we'll just crack it. Mm -hmm. Just rip it apart. Oh yeah, look at that. That should work. Okay. That's good. See, this weight doesn't really want to break, but mm -hmm. against itself, ah, you can see that break. Yeah. Another thing I could show you right now is that this wood can be split within itself which is really beautiful. It's satiny on the inside. Wow, that's nice. And if you're that's, careful, you can do whole pieces all the way down like this. That's like the stuff that you finish on the edge of your countertop, like that little lip on the countertop. Sure. That's what it looks like. Yeah, this is basically what we're doing is veneering. You yeah. Know, just whole annual ring veneering, not like a turned piece that cuts through the years. Yeah. This is a real strong veneer. So this is good now. We'll just leave it in the sun or in the shop to dry. I usually mm -hmm. leave it in the breeze. Just let it dry for a, a day or so. Up to 10 years, 12 years, I have some. Mm -hmm. It's still usable and I don't th any, see any problem with just keeping it indefinitely, using it down the road. Once we wet it, it'll be good. But for now, we want to dry a little bit before we tool it. So the next step will be up in the shop. Let's do it. All right, put away the hammers. You can come back anytime and hammer. <laughs> Sandra, you'd like to get in on that too. <laughs> I'm good. Let's see some baskets. Yeah, we'll do a little tour. I feel like they're different styles. Sure, this is um, what we have. A lot of this is our, our family collection. Some repair work. Because this time of year, late in the season, we don't have a lot of baskets that are available. Mm -hmm. You know, we sell early in the season and I can't quite keep up with the orders. But this is a good range of what's being made from, you know, carrier strap baskets. Those, those are so wear. beautiful, yeah. We do purse styles, like this is a nice purse style. I like this because of the design of the, the harness was a kind of a dream I had of Oh, yeah, supporting okay. the weave with one one piece that wrapped from one end and went back to the same. I really like that oh, that's idea. That's quite clever. It started with a traditional suspender style strapping yeah. like that. Like we, I make those too. You make but the I straps. Wanted, I yeah. wanted something that was you know you could wear this way and throw around back, mm -hmm. or if you're going to pick into it or something like that. So I thought it was fun. Yeah, it was a dream, so that was fun. <laughs> um, make all kinds, you know, traditional designs like this apple basket. Not my design, but I think it's really well thought out. So this this isn't something that you designed yourself, no. but okay. It's but really you, hard to come up with a new design. Yeah. Uh, it's been done for so long. It's just 
coming up with a way to reharness them or yeah. put your own shape into it. Yeah. This is, I mean, to me, this is a perfect design. It's credited. It's a German design, but made in this area, um, maybe down into the Hudson, the Hudson area. And why is it so perfect? Sure, as opposed to a say a flat bottom basket, you know, where where all the weight is in the bottom of the basket, pushing mm -hmm. down. This because you're going to pick apples or something heavy, potatoes. It's nice to have this peak where the, the fruit, the vegetable, can be pushed to the side, mm -hmm. distribute the weight. So they came up with this stack of eight. And normally that's all you would have is one, you know, one layer. And then they added on a second layer on top of that. Mm. So there's so much wood there. I mean, there's more than a solid inch of wood. Yeah. It's so neat. But the way it directs, directs material to the side, distributes weight is great to me. I really like it. It's one of the funnest things to weave. I mean, you can really get lost in this one. Yeah. Because you're just going around. And it looks so thin. I mean, is this also ash or is it a yeah. different kind of wood? Yeah, I'm just cutting them, you know, and, and gaining material, you know, getting thickness as I go. Yeah. This one, you're really making them as you go to fit. Julia's used this one. My wife's used this one a lot. Yeah. You know, it has these. These are disposable. If they ever break or wear out, we could put new ones. It's holding up pretty good, too, because she just is a worker. Yeah. You know, she picks a, a lot of apples, here. you're saying. <laughs> Loads them up. With <laughs> but this is a great design. Uh, yeah, part that's of, the stress, the Julia stress test right there. <laughs> yeah. The kids, you know, have all used this one to go picking, and it's held up pretty yeah. well without any... Well, that has a very similar, it looks like a similar peak. Yeah, to it, it. Is, it is the same design. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have the uh, reinforcements, but it's a smaller piece. And that's one that you've done, or...? This is this is my basket that yeah. I made, yeah, early on. So these color wise, this is what it will look like. This basket will age and patina. And then this one, it's it's like a it's like a it reminds me of a winnowing basket. It's a That's the inspiration for sure. It's not quite as tight a weave as a winnowing basket, yeah. so the bigger stuff will fall through. For me it's more of a a, a woven woven portrait, you know, to just show yeah. the wood, let it let it tell a story. I'm always finding these pieces that I just cannot burn or scrap, you know, but they're not quite something you can manipulate and make a basket like this. Now, is this where the little stems are starting to That's come out? That's going to be a branch spot, okay. yeah, so it's a knot. And there's a lot of these knees. I like these, yeah, that, you know, that's before the knot cool. appears, you get these knees. Those are my favorites. I can think that now that it's darker, it kind of comes out a little bit more of those, those imperfections in so a I way. I get to yeah. see all this as yeah. I'm tearing the tree apart. You know, these, these, I'm seeing it all the time. And I, this is a great way to lay it out for people. Like yeah. The inside of a tree. Yeah. But it's also functional when you can dry something on it. And then hang them. They don't take up any space. You can just hang them on your wall. You know, they're not going to take up shelf space. And then you have some over here. I can imagine those are more like laying your fruit, <laughs> laying Cookie your fruit basket, down, or yeah, cracker tray, or sure. like bread, you know, yeah. yeah. We, the wife has used these in the catering business, so for crackers. Again, it's a nice way to use that material that has. There's not really a straight piece in there. Yeah. You know, it's all bits. They didn't make a bit this cut. This, you yeah. probably see baskets and everything. We could we could put that in a basket. <laughs> Absolutely. I love baskets. Oh, it's beautiful. I find myself getting them too if they're, you know, for sale and it's cheap. Someone's just getting rid. I just need to, you know, bring it into our life and use it. You know, yeah. See, see what worked with it, especially these old. This, this was a repair, but it was the same material we're using, which is black ash. Mm -hmm. So I can learn from it, you know, where it broke. And how did you repair it to get it like? I, I don't know where the repair is. So like, how that did was, you get it to the same color? That's what I was trying. I'm actually yeah. just taking. What's left of, see, I make a bunch of these dyed baskets and I'll yeah. save my extra material and just pile it up. And then I'll pick through that already dyed material and just put it in because it seems to match this pretty well. It's mm. not perfect, but really there's such variation in older pieces anyways from dirt and age. Right. It works really good, but there's a lot of new material in this. Have you ever made a basket with this shape? Yeah, this would be a fishing creel. I definitely made these with a leather top or, yeah. or a woven top for fish. It's a great little basket, but she had it as a backpack. That was mm -hmm. her childhood. It's so adorable. Yeah, it was great. Great to be able to bring it back to life. Yeah. She was our, our post, post woman for so many years. And uh, happy to do it. It's great material. I mean, even at this age, it's a little brittle, that basket, but it's worth you know, bringing it back to life. Yeah.
Some of the other styles we're doing are the carriers, strap carriers. We do some purses, something you can wear and use every day with leather tops. Right. Don't have any of those in stock right now, but getting back to it right now. I'm, I got basket fever. <laughs> <laughs> it's the weather and the season for it too, I it think. Is, it so. does feel good to be in here. Yeah. This is pretty, pretty basic layup. It's a good weave to teach kids, you know, this square start. Some, some puppy hairs. Mm -hmm. You can lay them up pretty loose to start, you know, and tighten it up after. The, this is the inside of the basket. That's the outside. You can see the color difference. Yeah. It's like a it's like a chess game. You almost have to think in advance, you know, how they're gonna be shaped in order to come up with the last result. For sure. I look at a lot of old baskets for shape ideas and where where, where they've broken down or what, what their strong points are. Yeah, what are some of the things you pay attention to when you're looking at this? I'm trying to get it, you know, it a little bit, you know, perpendicular. Um, I should draw some lines on my table, but I wouldn't have to mm. you know, always be guessing as my eyes get older. But mm. actually, the, the less perfect a basket is, the more I like it nowadays. I'm finding, like, I like a little bit of uh, offness to it. Mm. You know, it just, just, it's more appealing to me. But yeah, I, I do like to measure sometimes, make sure we're close. I'm shaping it as we go, so I'll, I'll be changing the shape, you know, as I go up. If I find it's moving in one direction, mm -hmm. um, I do like to add a little reinforcement. I'll taper these a little. So this is uh, reinforcing. So a little reinforcement. Yeah. It's not much, but you could see like it's a, a wearable part that you could take off later if it does wear through and you still have your structure of your mm. basket. I th always thought of it that way, especially with a bigger piece. If you really were relying on it and hiking and something broke on the bottom, if it was a piece you could actually take off. That's pretty clever. Yeah, but it's still protecting the piece. You yeah. know, once you took it off, you'd still have the original basket. Oh, nice. I don't always do it. I, I like to do it. It's like a thoughtful touch, you know? It's forward thinking. Yeah. Which isn't common, I guess. Slip those in. I can always trim the height of them later. Mm -hmm. if they don't work out, but I think that's good. Let's see where we're at. Close? Yeah. Yeah. Seeing as that this is the the bottom, like this, I wanna break the fibers a little bit 
work them reverse so what they're going to end up being. So you have a little concave, it's bumped up. Hmm. Cause it's always going to go down with gravity. So if you can start it up, it'll help the basket last. It's like basket yoga. <laughs> but, yeah. So here yeah, we're just going to start the shape. This thin of wood, you can really bend it over like that without a problem. On the bigger pieces, I would roll it slow with my finger behind it and support it. Mm. But this stuff really is flexible, so. It's so unbelievable to see how pliable it is because yeah. once you see it in the basket itself, you, you feel it's the sturdiness. Absolutely. But all the components and the pieces working together and the way it's woven is just really resilient. Yeah, a lot of times I'll be thinking that the wood feels too thin to me, like each piece, but I, it's, you have to consider that it's a piece on top of a piece mm. for almost the entire basket. You know, it's only the spaces in between where it's breathing, you know. So you really don't need to have that heavy a piece of wood. I'm learning. Yeah. So bending it up, but I'm also bending it back. So I'm putting that shape in it too, just subtle. Because at, at this point, once it's out of the water, it's starting to dry. Mm. Well, especially if you're gonna have that little vase shape, right? You yeah, need to putting it kind of coax now. it that way. weave. There's ways to do this where you would start the weave, come around and end it on the same level and then start another weave so you'd have all these small strips stacked. Mm -hmm. That's more common with the older Native pieces, Native American in this area. Um, I don't want to use small little bits. I think it's more efficient to just keep going all the way up the basket. So I'm going to put this, this split. I'm going to split one of these uprights down the middle so once we come around we step it up come around, you know, you're walking up a step every time. Mm. So you can do it in maybe four strips, this whole basket. Would Otherwise they, you would have to do every one of these one. Right, one. once, and then where, how would they tuck them? Overlap them, so okay. you just have a splice. And if you do it right, you won't see the splices. Like, you won't see them on these. Yeah. Even there are four or five in here. You see them if you look up the basket, you'll see a doubled, a doubled. It's tricky, like, maybe oh, right there. You have to yeah. look close, because I really try to hide them. Yeah. A, yeah, I see that, but very you'd, you'd have to point it out, yeah. yeah. But you will see it on older baskets because they'll be uh, all askew and they aren't taking the time to really hide them. I just have the... Can you explain once more, Sam? What are you saying? Yeah, so I just asked, like, if you put one, like, how would you overlap it? Like, how would you secure it? And you could see there's just, like, a little double layer right I'll here. I'll be getting into it, too, when we do this. I'm going to mm -hmm. do at least four in this basket so we can... This one here. Maybe make a little space. wet. Mm -hmm. See all the fibers? Yeah. It's not nearly as easy to work <clears throat> with a knife. It just wants to open up. Right, but I see now how you say how the fibers are long and, yeah. you know, it's yeah, not it's not fine. necessarily splinter yeah. material. It seems like it could be a good, like, flax fiber almost in a way, you know, it, can, yeah. it breaks out this, into those This tree was pulped, you know, and not uh, Midwest. For fiber. Yeah. 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 That's a major, major pulp tree. Before the emerald ash boy, that was the bigger problem. It was getting harvested for paper and whatnot. So this piece is a start. T taking one of these and tapered it down so we can 
kind of hide the fact that we're going to be going at an angle all the way up this basket. Mm. and retighten it once we get going around. So I'm pulling it more than I will normally pull it when I'm doing the rest of the weave, just for this beginning, because you want to keep these corners from getting saggy. I see. So you got to put a little inward force. Once we're up two, three times around, it's just you're just following it without much pressure. And you're going to stay with that thinness of the of the consistency of this. Yeah, this yeah. overall for this basket is perfect. You mm -hmm. don't need to put much more into it because you work. It's a shape that comes tighter, which that in itself gives it strength. Mm. You know, it's like a that canoe thing where it's tumbling back towards itself at the top, giving it strength, not flaring out. Mm. Started, and, but we're one higher. Mm -hmm. you know, just continue that. No problem. Still leaving those protectors out. I'd imagine, like the little extra work that you did in the beginning, just to kind of split it. It just seems more continuous for me. You know that you're just going to consistently go around, as opposed to like cutting different strips and laying them, it just has, a, there's more flow to it, I guess, less interruption. Yeah, I think I've done it the other way, you know, where you're working bit to bit. Um, that this is where I can really know that everything's ready and I've already planned it all out. And that's where I get lost in it, for mm. sure. So this is all hands-on at this point, just pulling, squeezing, shaping. It's not, not just going around, it's, it's full, you know, there's many directions I'm trying to make this be. I'm trying to turn it up, I'm trying to keep it flat, I'm trying to pull this this way, you know. It's, I keep thinking of metaphors, but it's like a chiropractor, <laughs> like working in the body and finding out where the, the, you know, the tightness, the tight spots are, you know. There's so many metaphors, like it's a, it's a, it's a molding of a way, you know, too. A lot of repositioning it and always stopping to look at it because, like I said, I'm, when I'm folding this up, it's making this bottom go round again, even mm -hmm. though I, I broke the fibers up. So, we're going to have to reset that in the end to get it to be at least flat. Mm -hmm. it, it wants to be what it was, which was flat. All these pieces were flat. Right. Know, so this is just, it feels like a mess at this point. <laughs> so, it really is all hands on, just making sure these. I'm folding over each side flat, pushing up from the bottom to get the bottom flat. At the same time, pulling this piece, but we're not pulling it out of the shape. So this hand's pulling against this hand, and the thumbs and the fingers are working against each other at the same time. So there really is no, there is not an ability to leave physically and you have to mm -hmm. be full into it, but my mind can certainly not be worrying anymore. I get a lot of relief doing this. It's like a pro solving this problem. I find it very relaxing. Because I can already feel the shape once I'm into my third row, I know my mm -hmm. shape is there and I don't have to worry about if it's wrong, if it's off, if I had a problem where everything came out of whack, I can just pull it back down. You know? mm. I do that with the packs often. I'll get a shape I don't want and I'll just pull it back down and it could be a half a day's work of it. I, I, I know it's, it's worth it because it's a lifetime basket mm -hmm. and I won't be happy looking at it. 
and, yeah. and but the way it's, you know, I, my mind should be. I'm actually curious if you've ever, like, used a piece of wood that splintered or didn't look so great, and then you'd have to kind of, like, yeah, undo it. Yeah, it down. Yeah. Put so much time into the process of each piece from tree to basket. There's so much more time into manipulating the wood, you know, cleaning it, looking at it, that you just felt it so many times. Mm. You would know. Mm. You know, it's made it through a lot of inspection, basically. Yeah. We're getting close to putting these in. Yeah, I'm looking forward to when you have to weave those in. <laughs> That's easy. So I am pulling it. I'm trying to get this to come in quick now. Otherwise, we won't get the shape we want. We, it, otherwise, it'll just be a, a bowl. Yeah. So I, I'm starting at the corners to really tighten things up. Pressure-wise. It's nice on a small piece like this, you can get a good shape started with one strip, whereas the backpack, you know, one strip only gets you around mm -hmm. once and a half, and mm -hmm. you still are really wrestling with it. So it's, it's unwieldy. This is a tricky spot. We want to get this in here, but we're also having to do this. So I have to make some decisions here. Right. If it was a pack, I'd bring it back around and do the splice somewhere else, but this stuff is so thin, I think we can make it work. It is amazing how it just is like has that round bottom. I look at look at this as you showcase it, and it's like super <laughs> flat. It sits very nicely, and then this one you're gonna have to. <coughs> yeah, the real trick is getting it when you put it out in the the sun drying time. Mm -hmm. You really cure it. Mm -hmm. You make sure you've got it flat. So I've got this system where I'll take a string, a piece piece of string and I'll come up through the bottom all the way to the top and put a pencil across that I can put pressure to and just uh, kind of lace it up. Yeah. And that'll make sure it holds well. Because the drying time, it really act, acts like it was before, which is straight, mm -hmm. so it all tries to push out. But that's what makes the shape, you know, hold tight. You mm -hmm. know, it all has that expansion in the end. So we got the end. That I think we tapered it pretty good. Maybe we just do a touch. Just a touch more on this one. I'm just going to go back to here. That'll go right over top. Right, Easy so that's peasy. the second part, yeah. Yeah. But this one, I'm going to go like that. Ah, I see. So we're going to hide it like yeah. that. There's different ways to do it, but that works nice and tight. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of new action happening until the top. And I'm working all the pieces now. The uprights, the bottom, the weave, and you know, pushing, pulling, these are getting a lot of this. So they're gonna all want to go the way you're pulling the weave. Mm. So you gotta keep straightening them back out. It's continuous. It is yeah. a little bit like throwing a, a mug, a pot, you know, it has that feel to it. Yeah. You really, you are in control of the shape. I struggle with just putting time into something that's just visual. Yeah. I, I see that there's benefit to it. I enjoy it, but I, it's not for me to do. The closest thing is probably those, those trays, you know, but they're still functional as a drying tray or but I, I put them together as a wall, a piece of wall art. So you have the woven, the knots mm. character, and you're telling a story with the knots. At least I'm thinking of it that way. So that might be the closest thing to a sculpture. How has your view changed now with the emergence of the emerald ash borer? Like the fact that many of these trees most of these trees might not make it. Like how did how did your views change like pre emerald ash borer and to, to now? Or have as they? As far as basket making goes. Yeah. Um, 
I ignored it, you know, as much as I could, and I, and I had hope that it would skip us, and it, you know, and it didn't show in this area till late. But now that now that we know what's happening and the limits of our supply, um, I feel like each piece is more you know, taking more more time to make sure each piece gets used. I, I, I'm trying not to be as wasteful or neglect any part of the tree if I can. I mm -hmm. don't know. It's, I've slowed it down more. You know, I'm not blasting out baskets and I'm in no hurry. I just, I know these are like um, the history. You know, these are going to be a history of these baskets, these trees. Even when they recover, which is going to be 70, 80 years where you get another tree that's usable, you know, I want to think of these as a way to remember, you know, what could be done. Like the way I look at old baskets, I want to look at, you know, have these as a, an example of what could be done. Mm. This one's getting nice and tight. Yeah, it's starting to come together. Yeah. You really start to see the shape. It's beautiful. And we'll go back and do this. Depending on what this is going to be, if it was going to be a water basket, I'd want to test it with a mason jar, you know, to make sure we don't get too tight. Mm -hmm. But also, it's nice if you want to get a good vase shape to it to just let it go and mm. really crank on it because it could be good for utensils, anything. We have one for toothbrushes. Thinning it so that when it, it has a double layer over, you won't notice it as much, or? It wasn't a true end of the piece, because you know, I had to cut it back, so I it see. wasn't thin, I did. Yeah. And it's gonna fall right over this, which isn't a great spot to thicken it. Mm -hmm. You have such a thin piece. Right. So we'll see. You could always, I guess, cut it back further, right? Yeah, you could yeah. Bring, bring it back. Yeah. I try not, like I said, we just had that conversation about waste mm -hmm. in the wood. I feel like mm -hmm. I want to use every inch of it at this yeah. point. But again, you could see I, I do waste. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> it this, all gets burnt. <laughs> this could also be good wood mulch or something. You'd probably have to compost it a little bit first. It's good we ball it up. It's good for the sauna. It's good for, we're year-round fire burners, so. Oh yeah, because you have a wood, wood stove, right? Yeah, between so. the shop here, which, you know, making the baskets, but the house is heated with wood and the, the water for our showers is wood, so it, we have a lot of use for that material. So we can just let the fire go out and you know easily start it with balls of that. Mm. That's a good piece. Want to be able to hold on to it. And like to compare the two. Mm -hmm. It's like magic. It really is. But when you see. You're you doing it? You know what I mean. You can see it. it's it's because when you've never woven a basket before and you see it done, you're just like, oh my god, you can't see the component parts. It's like hearing a piece of music and not knowing that was B C G F. You know what I mean? That type of thing. Yeah, I mean, seeing you do it just really illuminates the process. Just seeing the music come together, basically.
So how would you resolve that, just pulling it tighter? I'll do this. This is what I would pull it right back down to this one. That's cool. Yeah, that's I, I kind of wanted to see that done, actually. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> I just want to come in a little more right at this point before I pull out of it. I miss demonstrating at the farmer's market or at museums because it's it's not what I first thought I'd want to do because I, I don't enjoy, you know, being around tons of people, but I, I like this is the best way, like you said, to see the process, Yeah. show people even if I'm not talking, they can you know really get a lot out of seeing me do mm -hmm. this. Um, also, don't mind. It keeps me present. I think if someone is talking to me, otherwise my mind might wander. That's a little better. It's drying a lot. It's starting to get stiff. You gotta work quickly then, I guess. A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I have a piece that. Um, <laughs> It takes me, it takes me 12 hours, and I have to do it start to finish. You know, I take little 10-minute breaks during the day, but I can't stop it because it's just one continuous, finely woven piece. And I've done three of them now, and it's, it's really a challenge. I have to like think about it the days up to it. You know, make mm. sure I'm prepared because it really is 12 hours of weaving, and I'm not, I'm not letting it dry out. There's just no way to do it another way. Like these little baskets, they don't take much material. You can you could make tons of these out of it, one tree. But it's I'll start with the bigger pieces, laundry baskets, storage baskets, and with the big wood, and then what's cut off from there, what's too thin gets turned into these. So I kind of work the, all the big baskets down to small baskets, and that's the most efficient use of the tree for me. The trugs are becoming really popular, that slat style basket. Yeah. And it's different. I think that's what's gonna be our future, you know. What, what the emerald ash borer, you know, taking our ash trees, you know, they're not going to be usable for weaving. It's killing the tree, and I need a, a tree alive, you know, to harvest it. Mm. So only what I have harvested is what's available to us. So I have a, a limited supply. I was looking yesterday, and if I was going to cut anything else, but they're pretty sprouted. So there's not a lot of usable wood. So it's just standing dead wood. Mm. It's not going to be a future in it. So we're gonna move towards, you know, making what we can out of what we have and then, you know, start doing slat baskets, which are built more like little boats. They are finding some resistant mm -hmm. trees though. So my hope is, or what they're doing with the chestnuts is they're like back crossing them with a more resilient mm -hmm. one, but that's gonna take so much time. Like our forests are gonna be so different. Because mm -hmm. there's a lot of ash in these or there was a lot of ash in these forests. Yep, and you can see the holes already. Yeah. I look at one straight out my window. That's my daily thing as I'm weaving. I'm sitting and looking at this mm -hmm. giant dead ash tree that just over two year period, just the whole crown went. You know, it's mm -hmm. just the skeleton of a tree. It's a reminder. Mm. And that's a white ash. Let me use those for the handles and rims. Yeah, so there's black and there's white and there's green. Mm -hmm. it, does um, white and green operate the same way the black ash does? No, not quite. Um, and I don't even know, you know, science wise yeah. what's what, but I think there's real close in betweens too. I, mm. you know, there's trees that I'm just like, this isn't quite this or that. Yeah. I, I key out the buds. I'm like, this <laughs> officially is this, but no, I think it might be a, a gray ash. I, yeah. I don't know. I just yeah. think there's like gray area. But really, it's to make the the separation like this, this black ash, and to be so flexible. Yeah. The white ash is a little bit stiffer, more dense. It's nothing I'd want to weave with. I know people that do it, and you know they they look like they do it. Their hands are beat up. And yeah. So about there. This in the sun. Just a little bit on the top. We're gonna come out a little more. I'm gonna pop this out in the sunshine. 
So before you actually do the top, you have to cure it a little bit more, or? Yeah, I want to take this moisture out. It's quite a bit of moisture in the width, you know. It, you'll see there'll be all spaces where this is tight now. Mm -hmm. You'll be able to see through that. If you just you know, put the basket together and didn't consider that, it would get really loose hmm. once it dried out. So when it dries out, you could actually move it a little bit still without locking it in too much. Yeah, whereas this, I can't. I'm going to be able to just slide all this down once yeah, I get a I little see. bit of time in the sun. It won't take much with this little basket. Yeah. All right, so that gives a little bit of tension to kind of pull it up so you get a flat bottom. Yeah, because it's when it dries, it really is going to want to straighten out. Everything's going to start going back where it starts. That's pretty good. Sometimes I'll leave them right here if I know I'm in no hurry, mm -hmm. you know, and then get us get the start going because it really will dry fast. But today, I think we really want to crank on this, so we'll stick it out on the. Sure. The wood pile and get Let's it going. Let's do it. Get a batch of these going, you know. It's yeah. Like they have a whole bunch of them in your hand. <laughs> you have a basket full of baskets. <laughs> like a fine sun here. The farmer's market, we just line them up on top of the car. Oh, right. that's... Yes, I'm working. Yeah. That works good. All right, we got to get some rims and handles for this little basket. And that's a little more of an outside job. I'm not sure, but we'll start and see if this, this wood here will work. I've got a piece of the black ash, mm -hmm. which normally I don't use like on a bigger basket because I want to pound it out for weaving. But these, these extra bits are nice length. I think they'll work for a rim. And handle. So let's try. I'll split it and see if it's usable. Okay. Yeah. I'm now fascinated. we got this white ash ready, and we can split that. So either way, we'll be able to do it. But sure. Now, has that log been soaking for a while, or? I cut this log in the spring, and it's been laying on the ground, so it has a little bit of rot on the outside. I see that. But I think we can get what we need maybe out of these sections. Hmm. You know, it's got a little character. We'll see. We'll switch over from the wedge and use this row. It's just another splitting tool, but you can control it a little better. And what was it about this wood that you said you're not quite sure whether this could be a good one or not? Well, because it's been sitting on the ground and I don't know what's inside it, you know, mm -hmm. how, how big the knots are. And if oh. the dog wants it, <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> so there's that. I guess we're not using that. <laughs> we'll split it again and see if we can get something out of that right. section. Do a lot of splitting and it isn't all usable, but it will be firewood if it's not. Mm. That's a cleaner section. Yeah, that here. is. Yeah, it's getting getting closer. Steel feels very flexible, even though it's been setting since the spring. It's not brittle. Well, let's get to a smaller bit. Go. <laughs> he's like, I like that he's one. He's really new to this. <laughs> <laughs> Now we're going right down the grain line as opposed to before we're splitting against it. <laughs> Beans, I know you want to help, but. <laughs> psst, psst, psst. Maybe. That one's actually pretty on the back because it has a little bit of insect 
Yeah, well, that's their bore, artwork. The bore, yeah. Boring through. Is that the emerald ash borer there? Yeah. Okay. That's, that's got its name in borer. Yeah. It bores through. <laughs> might even be a, a, graffiti. a larvae in there. Sometimes yeah. Sometimes you'll find them. That might have been the exit hole there. Mm. Yeah, it's it, it's interesting to me now after seeing it. At first, I was heartbroken, and you know, because every log I take bark off of now, I find this, but I kind of like to explore it and see what it, what it is because it is a, just another natural thing you know mm. it's interesting to me I like I always damage liked, too deep yeah I always liked seeing like little board it looked um like very mysterious you know all the different uh because you find them natively here different types of borers but there are lots of them yeah, yeah. he really wants that tool <laughs> Well, between these two, I think we could probably get what we need out of it. Good. Good. Yeah, so I'm just looking for a, you know, thick enough year growth in there that mm -hmm. I can use. <laughs> and, you know, for the rims, it's fine if we have a little knot in there or a little character. For the handle part, we're gonna get, you know, probably uh, that much. Just this'll, this'll work. So we'll go upstairs and we'll split this out a little further. Great. Yeah. He just wants that tool. <laughs> All right, let's split these a little smaller. We've got a couple of tools, like the one using outside, we had this. Another smaller fro. It's just something we can split down through the grain line again. So you want to get them as small as those little handles right there. Yeah, the, getting blocking it out as close as we can. You know, it'll be two to three times as thick as that, but we'll carve the rest off. Okay. I just don't want to have to carve this into that. Yeah, that's a lot of carving. that is a lot. So let's see if we can do this right here. holding that that's mm -hmm. good this part might have the rod in it you know because of that outside layer so we right. won't, won't, might not use too much of that well this looks pretty good this giant hammer the dog ate my smaller one I have a small had a smaller version <laughs> <laughs> has dog drool all over it now though he actually physically ate it <laughs> oh did yeah, he really <laughs> Try to control this split a little bit by pressuring it. It'll be pretty small. That's good. So this will be the rims, this one probably. Let's see if we can even do it again. And the rim is the the the, the, one on, the top. There's just, yeah, the one circular on each side top. Of the top. Okay. That everything gets laced together with. It's like, how many times can you fracture it? <laughs> we got one good one out of this. This one here's the good one. Which one's the good one now? This, oh, this I see. Yeah, okay. Feels good. I think, but that's probably good enough for just one. And this one, maybe. We do extra. You know, doesn't hurt to have an extra one if you mess up. You don't have to go back to the beginning, you can mm -hmm. just move on to an extra piece. You could probably use that one for the next one too if you don't use it, right? Yeah. There's not much waste. I'm controlling that split a little bit with pressure, otherwise it'll run right off one side. That's good too. Mm -hmm. So I think we'll save this one for the ears, the handles, and we'll make the rims out of this, these two. Yeah, I'm fascinated how you're gonna turn those into the little rims. Let's see. So let's make a little more space. Start by just getting it within one year on the on the outside bend. 
That way it's going to be wrapped around the basket. Mm -hmm. Make sure that's one year and not going through the years. Okay. Straighten it out a little bit because it's a little squirrely, squirrely. How long does it need to be? About this long. Right? Okay. I'm not sure. I think 19. So I think yeah. we're in the ballpark. I measure it. I usually have it cut long and then I'll go around and cut off what's hanging. Mm -hmm. I thought though. It's nice to do these out of the black ash too because it'll match the color of the weed. Yeah. I won't have to dye it to match. The bigger baskets, I have to dye the handles to match the weed. And what are you using for the bigger baskets? I'm using the white ash. It's really, really white Interesting. You know, compared to the brown. But it's a denser wood. It stays together for a handle. It's, you know, this isn't going to get any flex you know, for this amount of yeah. weight you'd put in it. It can hold fine. You know, I've used this on big baskets like um, my wife's back basket has a black ash handle and you know, it's held up good over the years. Mm -hmm. It's just hard to get it as thick as you want. So a little thinner. And if it's not perfectly straight, it's really not the end of the world, right? Again, I'm finding I like it more when they're not perfectly straight. Yeah. There's some character lines. It can't be, you know, a 90 degree in it, but I like a little yeah. movement in the wood. Tell it's not machine made. You know? Yeah, and I appreciate that. You're working with the character of the wood that it already has, you know. In the, yeah, in the past, I wouldn't have used this log at all. That would have been in the fire. You know, but n knowing that it's black ash and it's the last of what we have, I want to use it. Yeah. yeah. So just like the weave, we're tapering them out where they're going to overlap. That's getting better. In a way, it might make you like a, a better craftsperson in a way, or, you know, a basket weaver, if, if you will, because you're learning to work with something that's a little bit more nuanced. Yeah. Okay. And then it's all hand knife to get it to be beveled and round, I think, would be best. The roundness more than the weave. The weave we just took a little bit off, we're actually going to make this more of a D shape. Mm -hmm. It's real moist. And that's just been sitting out in your yard, right? And it's been out on the ground, yeah, since the spring. I was using it to prop the lids on the the canoes that have our black ash soaking. Yeah. The wind was blowing the lids off, so I just had some chunks extra. That looks pretty good. There's no tannins or anything in, in uh, black ash, is there? Yeah, the water, I mean, just in this, that I've only had going for a couple of days, yeah. I only had a little black ash on there and it's gotten pretty brown. Huh. Yeah. Well, I guess, and I see in your canoe too, but I didn't know yeah. if it was all, that was all yeah, because a lot of, of the wood. Yeah, a lot of that can be, you know, boiled and boiled down and make yeah. an actual nice dye out of it, but it doesn't keep well. It's stinky. Mm-hmm. So. Can you measure that one onto the, the tape Absolutely. measure that's one across? See if we're in the ballpark of 19 or 18. We're in about the 21, 21 and a that's quarter good. about. That means we can use this other piece, so that's yep. good. It's going to do the same thing as this one. I see that one's a little serrated at the end, but does that matter? Where's that? Just a little, like, down here. Well, I think you said we had 21, so I think yeah. I'm, I'm guessing I can pull it back all yeah. the way to here. Because I think at 19, I've got enough. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad we used this stuff. It'll be a challenge to see if the ears will bend right. Mm. It's a tight little bend for a piece of wood that's been sitting on the ground. But if I heat it up, it should be all right. So these we put in that water and we'll start on the ears. Those two. On the stove? Yep, somewhere in that hot water. I think it should be still warm enough. It is, yeah. It's quite pleasant. Now what tool is this? Mm. This is just a just saw. Just a little saw, right? And we need that one. Mark it at 11. Yep. For, does it matter from what end? The end I just cut. Could you okay. tell which end I just cut? Yep. It's 11. I think 11 might be too long. Let's do eight. Okay. Yeah. I'll do eight on this one then. The eight on this one then? Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna do my eight. We'll even them out after. Now it doesn't matter, I guess, what end, huh? Because nope. you cut both ends. We're good. I'll do this one. There you go. Just need a little nick off that. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. So same thing, just squaring them up, making them closer to what they're gonna be. Yeah, now that you have, um, you, know, you share how precious black ash is, I would, I would have performance anxiety <laughs> on doing my basket. If I did baskets, I would want to make sure that I get everything right, you know? Well, you saw how the weaving can be undone mm -hmm. how quickly. So that, that you know, gives me some sense of, you know, relaxation. This part maybe is a more tense, but mm -hmm. really the bending of it is where it's going to break or not. And that's, you know. It's, if it's going to break, it's not my fault, I don't think. I think mm. it's a uh, weakness in the wood, and I'd rather know it ahead of time. Yeah, that's a good you know, point. Like I just, that's not a good piece, so it broke. Yeah. You know, I, I took all the time to select it, carve it, look at it, feel it. I'm like, yeah. That's about a block of it. No. So I think, I think we have to mark the middle of that. Mm hmm um, at four? This. With the pen or do you want a pencil? See the side that has yeah. the rough? That's yeah. the side to mark. Okay. Mark the middle. Mm -hmm. And then I want to take out one and three quarters. You good at math figuring that out? Yeah. So then uh, from the from the four you want one and three quarters? I would do two and I'd take a sixteenth off at of each end. That's how my mind works. Oh, I see what you're saying. In the end, the space for marking is in the center of the wood and it's one in. Yeah, I think that's right. So this is like the four and yeah, then that's, that perfect. yeah, okay. And I'll just transcribe that right over. I trust you. <laughs> I am glad you trust me. <laughs> I don't trust myself. See, I'm having performance anxiety. <laughs> Great, that's why I said we this whole yeah. time. We were doing this together. <laughs> So taking that space that's going to be the bend out of that wood, because mm -hmm. it won't bend this chunky. It's just amazing how it just flakes like that. It's like butter in a way, in the way that you're working it. It's amazing wood. I don't carve lots of it. Yeah. Like I said, it's more of a weaving wood. Yeah. But it does carve nice. The color is beautiful to me, the brown. It's more appealing than the white ash or the sap wood of the same, you know, that's really bright. Yeah. It all warms up over time. It just takes a lot of years for the sap wood to look this brown, just with being in the sun and in the air. See what I was trying yeah. to get for there? Yeah. I just stabbed this camera though. <laughs> If you ever had your camera stabbed. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So without even soaking this, I'm just going to take a chance. Ooh. See if we can get a bend. Well, we can always make more. You could probably hear it too if it's getting a little yeah. cranky, huh? Feels pretty good. Amazing. Yeah, what a great wood. Wow. What a great wood. So <laughs> I'm going to bend these a little bit this way. Because to get them to tuck where they're going to be, they kind of got to get closer together at the bottom. Like mm -hmm. You can see. It's hard to get a good finish blade cut on there. Uh. So somewhere in between this. The uh, bigger handles that I do normal, you know, for my laundry baskets, I can do it all with the, the bigger knife. You don't have mm. to do much of this. Just taking the sharp edges off of those so when the wrapping comes around, it doesn't get caught and mm -hmm. break it. You could sand it off too, that's another way. I don't like the sound of sanding. When you look at old baskets and the hand of work is where you can see the maker's mark a lot of times because the weaving is just hard to change or make it unique, but different weavers will put a different cut on their handle. You can see their stroke work. Like you could put a, you could put a point there as opposed to just a flat flat ending where it starts. So when I'm looking at the basket and I see a few that are a certain way, you're like, well, that basket maker you know, probably made all of those baskets. You can just see, by the way, they left their knife marks on the wood. Now I'm going to go home and look at all my baskets, <laughs> analyze their handles. And uh, they can mark them too on the bottom or yeah. wherever. That's another yeah. obvious way. But I think on the older baskets, they didn't mark them that way. So yeah. I always look for that kind of stuff the way their hands were on the wood. Okay, let's soak that one. I'll make another. Yep. If I didn't lose it. It's like a little boomerang. We make a little bow and arrows for the kids when they were little, the same uh -oh. kind of idea. They love them. <laughs> That's cool. We should pull those rims out of there because we actually got to get them dry enough to sure. finish off. I think they're good. I just wanted to give them a little soak. just a little bit before they dry out. Put them together the way they're gonna be. Inside, outside, and then just. Stretch the fibers. And we need a little clampy. Or well, something that, I that little have. hanging basket has some sort of clothespins and things. We'll find yep. one or two of those. A clothespin will do? Sure. Okay. I should clamp it around all that business. Mm -hmm. Let's do another one up here. Yeah. That's, that'll start our drying because I don't want this to take too long. So handy. Yeah. Is that about the size? It's close. Yeah, yeah. it's good. Is the sun hitting the step shed out there? Let me see. Just, yeah. pop them on, just pop them right out in the air on the steps. That's good. Yep. It'll start the drying. As long as Beans doesn't come and take it. That's a, that's <laughs> a thought. We'll hear them coming. <laughs> Thanks for helping. Oh, I do very little. <laughs> You're doing the bulk of the work. Mm -hmm. As you should, my basket would look so janky. <laughs> it's fun when you uh, get a room full of people making the same, you know, you have the same pattern, the same numbers you start with, same yeah. wood, and the baskets so different and really reflect their personalities a lot yeah. of times. You know, the, the people that are really tight get that tight basket. <laughs> the wild ones just start to really flow out. It's fun. And it's not for everybody. You know, it really can be as, as calming as it is to me and meditative. I think it's the opposite for some people. Mm -hmm. It just makes them anxious. I also think it would probably be a time of your life, too, because as a, as a young girl, I would, do, I would sit and draw for days, but I don't think I've sat and done that now for 
you know, since I was 18. Yeah. So it's like, you know, maybe there's a time and a place for it too. Yeah, this is, you know, had moments where it's become a job. It really has been our survival out here. Yeah. And then we're always trying to keep the balance of it being really fun and enjoyable, never letting it get away from me. I was lucky. Lucky because Julia has her her herself so strong and aware and able to grow the food and get the kids mm -hmm. really everything they could need mm -hmm. that I could really focus on this and travel quite a bit in the beginning. Yeah. Happy to be here now and help out. How do you check yourself from, you know, making it not feel like a, a job or a, a chore? It's, it's been all about, um, the beginning of it, like when the orders come, deciding from there what it, what it's going to be. Yeah. You know, not not taking everything. Yeah. Because just because it's business, it's it's not to me. So learning to say no, then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To the point where I just shut it down at times and just stop. Be like, I'm not taking anything on. Yeah. Just gonna deal with what we've taken on and make some stuff I want to make. You know, mm -hmm. and get back to it. That that always helps when I don't have a a list of things ahead of me. I like mm -hmm. that. We should look at the other one and see if this one's close. Yeah. Your fingers are able to grab out of the hot water. It's not even that hot. Oh, it's good. kind of more like, I'd like my bath water hotter. <laughs> yeah, this one's got a, a little bit more to it, I think. I like it. It's like a little keyhole. Yeah. This one, I could say we'd try to match it a little better. Wood feels really nice. I think I'll use the rest of that log. What you know, what, what I can find is as far as straight sections, I'll mm -hmm. turn it into little handles. We'll have to get the other half away <laughs> from from beans. He loses interest quick. <gasps> I like to tuck these right into the basket to dry them. You know, just tuck them in the weave just a little bit mm -hmm. out there, and it holds them where they want to be. Hmm. Do that. Start to pack it. Oh, yeah, look at that. It's just two strips. Still needs more, though. There's some through there. I don't think we need this anymore. Oh, I see. So you could just like tuck it in just like that. Yeah, you don't even need anything extra. Right, the rim is what holds everything together. Yeah. Cut these a notch. For drying, it's perfect to put it right where it's going to be because it'll stretch the weave. Yeah. And do you want, like, where do you place it, like the end of the hole? Because is this going, all going to bend down? Is this the top of the rim, or? There's still some finishing at the top to be yeah. done. So we have to, because we started with this being, you know, we're going up like this, we yeah. have to kind of come down with this one. So we'll figure that out. The last strip, we just add it. Once it's all dry, I tuck yeah. it in. Kind of do it at the same time. And then get these ears somewhat level, crossed. Get those to go. These have to dry a bit now. We're gonna have to find a sunnier spot, I think. Okay. Maybe we're, I don't know, we're moving that one. <laughs> I know. Into the woods. <laughs> I want to fit these just a little bit better, make sure we're in. bit longer than I thought. Let's keep it all just in case. It's a little longer to get around those ears. Mm. Okay, let's go find some sunshine. Yeah, this feels pretty well dry. So, you can kind of see it here how much space there oh, is, yeah. you know, and it, when we put it out in the sun, it was all tight, but yeah. the idea now is to pack it, get everything tight again. May need to add a little more to the top, but it's all right. Amazing how much it just decreases. 
Yeah, it might be 15%. You know, mm -hmm. It really does move. And it'll absorb moisture again, you know, once, once it's woven even. So there is a sweet spot, you know, not to make them too dry. So mm -hmm. if they were to actually get in the rain, it wouldn't pop a rim off of it. That's good. You think you'll need to add another row? A little bit now. Yeah. So you're adding this because the, the wood tightened up and you need to, to get the right height now that it's given more space. Yeah, that was as high as we were. We might have mm -hmm. been even a little higher. I try to weep up higher than I'm going to finish. And then we packed it down, so we lost all that space. And now we're back to finishing it off. Mm. So you can try to, try to guess where to be. Probably that. There's no real definitive way to do this. Okay, I think we'll just tuck it right there. So the next step would be to get these folded alternate inside and out around that top weave. Hmm. And then we can stick our rims, wrap them, and that'll be so tight you can't. It won't go anywhere. It's all of these tops that actually support the top of the basket rim. Hmm. Some of the older baskets, the mo mainly you don't see this done, taking taking time to do right. They'll just um, we cut every, every other one off. So you just have to do one of these. Hmm. One of these. I think it's nice to have double the strength. You know, fold in both directions. Yeah, and even though you're folding one in the kind of the opposite direction, it's not going to snap. Um, it can if I do it right now. Either way would snap because it's that sun really took a lot of moisture. Like this one wants to. Right. It's fine. You can get away with like I said, half of them. The old style would be cracked or cut off. So. I so just, you'd need to rewet it again, or. Right now, I'm just going to cut them down a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, if I'm doing a few of these, I like to cut them even so I can set them in the pan and walk away. You know, for four or five minutes and let them just be. I want the water just to come onto this top weave. Because the you know so though you can stretch the fibers all the way down to there, but this is something we can just hold in here and right, you it should soak. So you're right in this. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not quite as hot as I'd like it to be, but this being thin, I think it will soak. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll get a sense. Okay, so you're putting them in the water to so be rewetting just that top. Why? So we can turn them back onto themselves. So this will turn and weave under the weave. It'll It'll be just easier like, to see it, you know, when I'm doing it than to explain why that makes any sense. I almost heard it, though, when you were bending them. It almost heard like it was going to crack oh, a little yeah. bit. Yeah, for sure. That's what stopped me. Now, I think what we can do is thin these out to help them bend. And you can control that. So yeah. that's, that gives you a little easier. So that's not cracked, but it's got some raised fiber. It's actually right. perfect. I think that'll work good. I'll go a little deeper on this one. And you could cut through it all the way. It's not going to matter. There's, you know, there's more, mm -hmm. more to hold it. How few can, of those can you have in order for it to hold the rim well enough? I've seen baskets with none. Wow. You know, and they just rely on the rim to be strapped really mm -hmm. tight. But if you were to put handles, which this has, on the rim, and you pull on that, mm -hmm. there's nothing holding it. You'd have to put some sort of nails. Are you scoring every other one? I am right now. Okay. These are all outside bending in, and then I'll reverse and do the opposite inside side. bending. Ah, out. I see, yeah. That makes total sense. Thinning them out like this helps you to get them under the weave too, because yeah. it's, it's a tight space on a little basket like this. What, what are you exactly thinning though? Is it like between the, the growth? thickness of one year. It's about, I'm taking it down to about a half a year. A half a year, okay, so that's what I was the wondering. The years vary, so yeah. it, it, you know, that's all relative. It's like in between the growth rings though. Yeah, that. And, and that space can get divided multiple times. On a, on a thicker piece of wood, yeah. you can do it in half, and then each half yeah. can go again, and each half, you, know, you can keep doing that to where it's translucent. It's hard to do it, but it's worth it if you enjoy that yeah. satin finish. Yeah. You know, 
there are baskets that I choose just to, you know, make all that satin material and it'll be the inside of a piece, you know, that's going to hold a certain thing mm. or the outside and it'll really reflect the light differently than this does. You know, it really has a shine to it. Okay. So now measure all these just by folding them where they're going to fall and knit. So the idea is they need to go under, under. the weave. Under the weave. Under the weave. Yeah, so that they don't come poking out. Yeah. And you could just tuck them and let them, you know, fall where they lie. Mm -hmm. It's just a little neater to decide. It does look good. Now I'll ta <laughs> taper all these. And that's to easily get into the, the, the weave the below. It's, yeah, it's, the tucking. It's a tight space. This is another place where you see the hand of the maker. Some people would just come through and do one side, so they'll mm -hmm. be like da, 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 mm -hmm. angled through. I was gonna say, you probably don't see it that much, do you? Because it's hidden. For me, it's all I see. Yeah. When I see a basket, I'm seeing the, the making of it. So yeah, but most people, <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't. See, now that you pointed out the handles and everything, like I said, I have to go back into my baskets and like check them out now. Mm -hmm. You've ruined me. No, no, there's more to think about. And, you have an eye for detail, so it's yeah. just one more thing to look. There should be a black-handled knife behind you on the shelf. That's my next tool I need. I'd imagine, though, you have to still work quickly because it, it's not like it reconstituted with water too much. He's bending over, yeah. yeah. They, they're already definitely getting tighter. So that's over and under, just like that. all the outs. Could get away with that for mm -hmm. a small basket, but mm -hmm. we'll take the time and go all the way at this point. Doing this without a schedule is, you know, the, the easiest thing I do in life, I think. Just yeah. making a basket without worry of when it needs to be somewhere. It just It needs to be where it's going to be, when it's going to be at. Just let it do its thing now. And that's made all the difference in the way I feel physically. I'm not in any rush usually. Coming around the mountain. Inside's a bit tighter because we've already taken up space. Mm -hmm. On the outside one that stretched the weave tighter so the inside is much much less room to fit a piece. Does it matter to do inside or outside first? No. Just preference? I do the outside, the ones you're going to see first, because I really want to make sure I put the energy into right. making sure where they end. The inside one, sometimes I wouldn't even worry about the, where they fall on a basket like this. You're not yeah. looking inside it. Anyway. Yeah. It's like asking somebody whether they put the peanut butter or the jelly on first. <laughs> so these short ones, we're just going to leave and fold over, just so they're helping, but they're not going to be tucked. Yeah. It'd be a little challenging to work with them, but that'll be, it's worth having them there because these little things, you know, need more support no matter what. It'll hold them. Even that where they, you know, sometimes they won't terminate in the right spot. Mm -hmm. That looks real good there. You know, I'm not, I'm not against that. And so you're kind of putting them on the flatter, it seems like a flatter sides here or something, maybe not. No, I have to go opposite of this. Okay, There's I see. There's no way to feed them in there. Yeah, like the line. spinal column. Yeah. Yeah, we should have a mason jar to do the mason jar testing. It looks too tight for a mason jar. Yeah. But I, liked, I felt like when we were doing it, all oh, the shape's nice and tight. It'll yeah. be a nice little utensil basket. Mason jar is a hard shape because it is a big jar to fit in mm. and still have a taper. It almost makes it um, a drastic shape, and the bottom corners stick out enough that you can damage it, you know. The rim gives it its actual flare at the top, because mm. it's going to come out to meet the rim. That's where we're going to get that. And it secures the handles, or the ears, as you call them. Yeah, well, they look more like ears, yeah. Mm -hmm. They do. Too good on that one. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's just thin it out a little. 
sharp edge there. Now that it's dry, it's a little more obvious where the sharp edge is. Since we're going to be pulling pretty tight on that top, it's mm -hmm. nice to get it round. Still a lot of flex in this piece of wood. I could straighten it right back out. Mm. It's not that dry, but so thin. There shouldn't be too much movement, you know, in that thin of wood. Oh, I was going to ask if, like, you're doing the rim. I feel like the rim has to be really tight on top. If it was a pack basket, I'd want to have it really, really well fit. You know, dry but not brittle. Mm -hmm. Because that handle gets a lot of use on a pack basket. That's its main pickup yeah. and put down, and you want your notches to stay real tight. This, I don't, you know, you're barely going to be pulling on these. Mm. We'll get it close and just start, and I can kind of, as as I start weaving, can hold it together because it's not going to want to. Yeah. It's just what it is. Rims are in place. Ears are where they're going to be. Just got to mark them. So now you have to weave around this, there's or still, no? There's still one more little oh. thing that is make or break on these, and that's getting these ears attached. So. So we're gonna try to cut that out of there. Oh wow. I don't know, but kids have borrowed my my fine sauce. So we're gonna try it with this sauce. Oh, see. Oh. You can see here if I do it right here. Mm -hmm. This is a giant saw for this task. I don't know. This is uh you just everyone say yes, this is gonna work out fine. Just enough to catch the rim. like a little slow clap. Sure. Well, let's get the other one there. <laughs> yeah, I held my breath a little bit. I know. Yeah, <laughs> like. Sometimes it takes a couple of tunes, but that's good. I don't know. Look at that. Snap her right in there yeah. like that. to finish it, the wrap. I hope you wash that cup before I, uh, you uh, put it back. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not big on that dog yet. I think I'll, I'll grow to like it. This piece is a little thin. That's what we want, like, for wrapping the top. It's not a big, chunky piece. Mm -hmm. It's thin, but it's strong. And how long has this been sitting in the water now? It wouldn't take much, but I think I started it when, when we walked in here a half hour ago. Mm -hmm. That was the first thing I did. So you're coming up through. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm going to try to hide it a little bit. It's like you're securing the inside of it. Just kind of tucking yeah. that tail because we're going over it. And yeah. It's going to hold once I go around once. We've got the outside of the tree on the outside of this wrap. And we're just going to be going through these holes. Mm -hmm. Some you got to make, make room or punch holes through when we get to these spots. But let's see. Not hold itself.
it's amazing to see it all come together. It started, started from just the raw material. Just a yeah. pile of sticks. Yeah. yeah. Again, it's that agreement, you know, agreement of each piece with the next piece that just mm. becomes this vessel. I love it. It's always hard to imagine it when it's sitting there on the table. It is. Even I mean, for but... me, who does that? I was just like, that's <laughs> that. There's a basket. I can see it. Yeah. You have like a newfound appreciation when you see it really come together all in one. It's so cool to not be stuck doing any one thing all day. How it, each, each part of it's a little bit different. Mm -hmm. It could be done in a different position. Now, was basket weaving, maybe in this area, or whatever, was it a woman's work, men's work? Did it matter? This type is a combination, you know, what I've heard mm -hmm. is that it was the men pounding and the women weaving. But I've seen a lot of, you know, Native, Native American folks, you know, whoever doing it. Mm -hmm. Basically what anything I've heard of was would be the men pounding, the boys pounding, which mm -hmm. makes sense. Get them out of the house, get yeah. them out there. I mean, villages had multiple, multiple people, you know, pounding yeah. at once. Yeah. What a great thing to sit around in, you know, during the winter and make baskets. Yeah. For. Well, and if you had a group of people, you know, pounding that wood, I mean, you'd get it done really quickly. Sure. You'd actually probably save your wrists and that's the thing yeah. i was considering is like how fast can i process the trees i have yeah if i physically could do it but yeah that would be, really help to get them processed yeah because then i can store them that's just like a you mention it now and it's like such a good community kind of builder you know you get mm -hmm. your energy out but uh, by doing it together you uh save each other so do you think you'll put a like a little patina on this on this basket or you just put linseed oil or I would linseed it. Mm -hmm. I don't like to. I don't like to dye dye them afterwards because mm -hmm. you can't get in behind. Mm, you'd probably dye them before. Yeah. yeah. When I do the dye baskets, all the material is cleaned, and then I stick it in the dye. Yeah. That hot water would be dye water. Yeah. It's it's messy, but it, it makes the best finished product because the dye is all everywhere. And it's just tannins yeah. then that are dyeing it. Yeah. yeah. But when this dries and moves, you won't see any lines where it's not dyed. If you, know, if you actually dye every side of the material mm -hmm. and then weave it, it's a little hard on the hands because it's acidic. Ah, yeah, interesting. Never really thought about it. But I think it acts like a preservative too for the wood. I think it's a good thing bug-wise. I mean, that's that's one of the benefits of doing it. It is look. It looks great. Mm -hmm. That's what people always comment on it. That's why I was wondering, you know, how much tannins the ash actually had, because typically that would be the thing that would save them from borers and things like that. But I guess it's not enough tannin in there to stop the, the borer. So this you're just thinning up so it fits more neatly to the rim. Yeah, it's trying to have a big bulging tail mm -hmm. at the end. So that's once around. Gosh, yeah, even just once around, it, it makes it feel, like, pretty sturdy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For this size basket, that's really all it yeah. needs, but let's, let's do it. Let's go all the way. Just double, double back. Does it get a little harder to fit in mm -hmm. every little time, you know? Mm -hmm. It's so funny because you're working with, like, millimeters, you know? Yeah, this is a little bit more frustrating than the bigger pieces, but... When did you actually start weaving? Right around 98, roughly. Just that apprenticeship. What made you think about that apprenticeship? Like, had you done any anything like this before? Mm, no, I could, like, the weaving pattern, I think I was always drawn to it. I looked at baskets when I was a kid and deconstructed my parents, you know wicker with my mind and you know some of it I actually destroyed but <laughs> just something about it you know, I really liked weaving and 
inside. Little silly things like pot holder. And then lacrosse sticks seem to be the next thing I remember weaving and being huh. like, oh, this makes sense. These knots support these things and I just like how things work together, you know, small things to make something strong enough yeah. to take impact like that. And then just it was half a stance to find someone that needed a basket help. And I was drawn to baskets, you know, the first time I saw one sitting there in the sunshine, kind of like what I do. I'll put this out to dry mm -hmm. and then I know people see them like the mail carrier sees them mm -hmm. as they're out there by the road. And that's how I saw it, just passing by, I saw a drying basket and that was it for me. Mm -hmm. It just was all about the way the light hit it and I just wanted to know how to do that. And then you were lucky to find somebody around here as yeah. well to do an apprenticeship with? Yeah, I was very lucky. Oh. And I think that, you know, we'll do, we'll do the same thing. The kids taught the kids so they, they have a good sense. Yeah. They've been around it enough, so I feel like they would pass it on that way. And yeah. Right now, I, I'm drawn to doing, I think, a class out here um, just to make use of the trees because I know I can't get them pounded out fast. Yeah. And it would make more sense to just see them get used. So, you know, we'll, we'll get set up to do some courses out here and mm -hmm. have people come and make use of those trees. So we just need to finish that off and tie it off on the inside, but that's pretty good. Wow. And all the bits are together. So, this one's hard to see. You see yeah. it's going under that? Yeah. It's going under one. It's a real tough one. Yeah, it's one of those things that if you had a tinier hole to the basket, you'd have to use something with like a neck to pull it and pull yeah. it up. It's already just, yeah. I can't really, my hand wants to be in there, but yeah. it can only be half in there. <laughs> That's good. But now it's gotta go under this one. Oh. <laughs> and then not under the next one. Crowd cheers. <laughs> okay, let's see. It's pretty close to that one. Yeah. So Square it up a little. Yeah. Yeah. Look at that. Well, I think feel I. <laughs> yeah, powered through that. That <laughs> needs a little clap right there. <laughs> How about that? Well done, Jamin. Thank you so much for showing us You're your welcome. your work. Oh, here's another little one. Mm -hmm. You make the tiniest little baskets. Yeah. Yep. Do you do it with your tiny hands? No, I don't. <laughs> Although I should try that. <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> She has these little tiny hands that she wears sometimes. <laughs> and they're really detailed is the worst part. Yeah, so it's a little creepy. I have five of them, they're even worse. So when did you make this basket? Um, a little bit, like five months ago, I'd say. What did your dad say? Did Six. he say this was, this was good? D does he, uh... That was the first tiny pack basket I've made. And who did he make it for? No one, I just decided to make it for myself. Yeah. Well, that's great. You can't you can't wear this though. So. No, I can't. <laughs> Although if I I probably could add more holes than I could wear it. Yeah. And then what about this one? That one I made when I was like five. Really? A long time ago I made that one. So you really got the the uh, the making of the basket bug. Mm-hmm. They're really cool. Yeah, they are really. Is your dad proud of you? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> this one isn't that good since it has been upstairs and kind of dusty. Yeah. But I did try to get it better. How many baskets have you started to make? I haven't have any right now that I'm in the making. Yeah. But I'm planning to make another one of these tiny ones. That's cute. Mm -hmm. That's cool. You can yeah. compare the two because you'll see like, oh, this is the very first time I did one. Yeah. See the difference. Do you like making the tiny baskets or do you think you'd, you'd make a big one? No, big ones are too much work. Yeah, too much work. So this, our, this one itself took about a day, maybe two. Yeah. 
So do you do the, the pounding as well? Does your dad make no. you do the pounding? Not yet. No, I've been trying to convince him to let, because he pays the brothers to pound them. Yeah. But he won't pay me to pound them for some reason. <laughs> I think he's more protective of you. So do you get to use the work that your brother, so your brothers pound the wood and do you get to actually just make the basket then? Yeah, my dad helps me with some of it. That's great. Like getting the main, main part of it done, the bottom. So what do you think about your dad's basket weaving? I like it a yeah. lot. Yeah? I have my own pack basket that was actually used in the Cinderella movie. Oh, it's really? It's a replica, yeah. Wow, so he made that for you? Mm-hmm. That's so sweet. I've had that for since I was two, I think. Do you use one for a backpack? Yeah, that's the one. It's like this big. Yeah. It's pretty nice. It's the only thing he... Yeah, he hasn't made any more sense. Yeah. But that was the one I got. Then the brothers, we each have our own pack baskets. My mom gets a purse, wooden purse. What do you think about it being like one of a kind? I like it a lot more than... Something that was mass produced or, yeah. Yeah. So do you think um, you'll be making another basket? He said he just has basket fever, so do you think you're gonna be making another basket? This yeah, I'm gonna try to make as many as I can. Oh, good, great. Mm -hmm. So you st you're basically starting basket making sooner than when, when your dad started. Yeah, my brothers haven't been that into it. Yeah. I think my brothers maybe have made one basket, but I even have my own weaving bench up there. That's so great. I'm like, I'm, I'm so glad to see that you, uh, you took a shine to it. Yeah. Yeah. Because you're learning it so much earlier than your dad. Than your dad you're even did. All the good techniques from him. Yeah. yeah. You'll it, be able to make such a cool basket. And you have small hands, so he was even struggling trying to get into like one of those small baskets. So that mm. since you have uh, tiny hands, you'll be able to make even smaller baskets. I think I'm gonna try to convince my dad to use the tiny hands in one of his baskets. <laughs> <laughs> I think that would be a fun little video. <laughs> you hear that, Jamin? <laughs> he says it's A-OK. -okay.